Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Uh, still in the downs of it, so we're just gonna play a 10 and 0 game. Not do too much talking. Trying to get back into things. Just e4, e5. Okay, he plays this, whatever. And he plays some type of gambit. Um, and let's just showcase how you deal with such damage. We could take and we could either play d5 and get everything out of his uh, ideas and I think this is the best approach because White now really doesn't want this, he wants a lot of initiative by me taking the pawn and then me taking another pawn and things get really dangerous for black so d5 most practical response and already our opponent is thinking he takes, uh, we just say uh, don't think too much about the moves and I think we transpose in some type of, uh, I don't know I'm pretty much out of the MQ. So obviously we cannot take the pawn as we would hang the queen. So we're just gonna add some pressure to the knight, pin the knight to the queen. Yeah. It's simple as that. So it takes with queen. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so if you take here, he takes with the knight. He is also unpinning, but we. I think we have a little intermezzo move here by taking the knight because if he then takes the queen we'll take it with the bishop and we're actually emerging a piece up so he has to ruin the pawn structure and after he takes we can take here and he has a double look at these pawns it just doesn't look good so that's what we're gonna do we can also take this pawn you know, we don't have to, you know, play positionally, we can also play tactically. And we're, then we're just a pawn up, right? Because these checks, we have to check. Doesn't make sense. If he gives this check, we can just place this. So yeah, I'd rather be a pawn up than anything else, and we're also attacking the rook this way. Another three next, maybe. Maybe this. We'll see. Uh, I just woke up, but uh, obviously uh, you guys don't know what time it is. That's nice. He gives a check. He wants to exchange queens. We'll say. Well, we don't really have much choice. And now we get this position. We're pawn up. We're just chilling, and we're definitely playing for two results here. Um, a draw and a win, but that's what I saw first, but now I see he has the bishop here, that's actually slightly nasty. But nothing to be worried about at the moment, you know. Let's just develop the knights, just simple chess. Yeah, text it is one, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and this is the reason why the bishop pair is so strong, look at them, you know, just doing their job so definitely unclear what uh, what the deal is here it's a fresh account no? no not that fresh he ain't that fresh so let's just develop the knight here now because this uh, squares up a cup you know doing it something else and we both castle down which makes sense in the semi end game because there are a little bit too many pieces in my opinion to be for it to be an end game. And we're holding our ground in terms of time for this time, that's nice. Alright, he he does some freaky stuff here. He's definitely doing some freaky stuff here. So good to do. So the knights may be a little bit misplaced, you know, he doesn't really have great squares at the moment. You could play something like this. But then knight d6 is coming. Slightly unpleasant because then it would also indirectly hit this one. Uh, so yeah, this is a great move. It's a great move. And we cannot do the same because we don't have light square. He has a dark square vision and we have, don't have a light square one. So already the difference in the position is already showing a bit, which is a bit annoying. And king c7 doesn't work because of bishop f4, 
for check and now uh, where to go back and then this comes anyways so it's a really big decision we have to make at this point and we have to dock some time for this well if the knight lands here I guess we just have to give the bishop and in the meanwhile we're just trying to start up our own plan by um, attacking either his bishop or we play a slow move like h6 and since I'm slow today I'll just play h6 and I blundered a pawn that's very nice of me to blunder a pawn like that so yeah Why did I not see this pawn? Oopsie. Alright. Yeah. It's a, it's a day to wake up first. Oh, Alright. Mm. We can play this. But then, you know, the bishop is hitting some other stuff. So we're gonna go here. I don't know. We're just hitting nothing, just hitting air, but you know, air is hitting better hitting air than hitting nothing. And uh, obviously, we didn't take our time properly enough to assess the position good enough, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, rapid. We'll try to get back, but I cannot promise anything. <coughs> So he has a good knight. He has a good bishop. Okay. He's hitting us with a lot. I have to say. He's doing a great job. We we'll have to take, I think. And after takes, takes the king is still open, but he takes there first. Okay, that makes somewhat of sense. Yeah. Still makes sense. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's slowly getting quite annoying. I don't really know what to do. So, he has regained the pawn and he has the bishop pair. But for me to really like lose the game, I have to really make a mistake. I think I already did that. So now we are unbreaking the pin he put us in with the pawn, so we can still move back. But uh, yeah, it's already quite unpleasant. We do win this pawn though. There's no way we don't win that pawn. But then he wins this pawn. So yeah, things are very unclear, I would say. And I think it favors him. Uh, all the variations there are. Because look at the bishop pair. Like, I already have like almost no squares to move into. Like, I am lucky to go, be able to go to b8. But our opponent is struggling to convert a little bit. So, yeah. Probably g6 if you get the time. He's probably like, oh no, we lose the pawn. But then. You know, you win this one, and then you probably get a better position. But so we are playing to play g6, so you cannot take that. Um, and this then just comes with tempo, and then we can play g6. His plan, though, is maybe to I don't know. Well, it's not clear what his plan is. He goes there. It's logical. Logical. Okay, the rook is still not participating. That's the only problem we're facing at the moment. So let's play this as plans. And this bishop is also just a menace. Like, we cannot attack it at the moment, and it's just getting, giving a lot of squares away. 
that the king might need in the future. So it goes there, very logical, very logical. <laughs> I sound like a caro. So we might need to just defend it. We can also just not take that pawn because it's defended. So take the pawn, take, and then move this here. Uh, not with any concrete ideas. And then he could take this pawn as well. So let's just defend it for now. I don't see the harm in doing that. He might even take here. You know, he, he might not want to lose that pawn. But we keep the tension a little bit longer. I don't want to go pawn grubbing out of nothing. Out of thin air. And we might also want to go our king here. Because then he has to drop back. So we're kind of you know, dealing with the pieces that are on our side uh, of the board. And maybe then we take the pawn. We can't be, too, you know, too greedy here. It is just a pawn. So, yeah. And now, I feel like we can take a pawn. Because he doesn't have any checks. As I can see, as far as I can see, and our knight might just go something like this, or it might just go back. We have a long-term plan of pushing these pawns, so we're definitely not clueless anymore because we won a pawn, and this pawn is very important for a good reason. We need to know why, because on the long term we can push these pawns, hopefully with good technique. Uh, and then, you know, we'll get running. And the pawn that should promote, you know, the passer is this one. Because this one will encounter this one at some point. So this pawn is the one we should pr try to promote. With a big emphasis on trying. Because, uh, you know, at our level, until 2000, no one is really uh, good at end games. So he is really logical. He knows that he has to convert on this side of the board which is uh, yeah which I agree with I totally agree with this guy and this makes it also hard for me to move because now I fear fa uh, fear face fear and he is not really facing fear because it's very slow what I'm doing hmm. so yeah what to do okay I think it's beneficial for us to do a move as such if only it would not blunder this check but we need to get rid of this bishop I think that's something we need to do and in order to do that we might need to get rid of this rook first you know our rook is significantly worse than his rook because we are fulfilling a defensive task and he is fulfilling an attacking task so it makes sense to me to try to exchange those rooks and he cannot yet give a check yet and the reason I didn't put the bishop back here to exchange is because the bishop has left this space and now he can give this check and bang and we're doomed we just lose the we don't lose the piece but it's it's uh it's not nice to allow so my opponent taking very logical and now he has the bishop pair, yes. But for a pawn, so... You know, he's still pawn down. He doesn't really have a passer yet. Um, so, we'll see uh, what this position brings us. I put the knight back here because I see some potential of taking here. And, or some, doing something nasty like this. If the pawn is pushed... He pushes his own. Very logical. Again, opponent playing well. Um, I'll go here. You know, a king, our king probably belongs at this side of the board to stop this one. 
Because he is, in fact, a bit faster. And now we gotta calculate here, here, and then we're doing this. So here, he takes, takes, here, wait. What? Here, takes, takes, takes. Winning this pawn. Uh, that's, a, that's a pity. And then he has some defenses here. We do have the knight, we can take this knight. It's very unclear actually what's going on in that situation, but our king is getting at least to the right squares. Um, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. So takes, takes, takes. Uh, maybe here, attacking this, getting closer to this pawn. But he pushes there first. So you can go here now, there and there. We have to get closer. I thought he would take the pawn. I think that's also probably the best move. The position. And if he pushes the pawn again, we do have this very nice tactic. And I'm actually quite happy that he didn't take the pawn because now we have this like uh, protection shield for when he pushes we can go here and then promoting would not be such a danger because it's not protected because the pawn is protecting it so we're actually having a blast here and this is what I mean but okay no one is really uh, doesn't know what he's doing and he moves the king up we'll just take the pawn there's really nothing else I think well actually we could have made a case for this first to pick up this pawn to remove any sort of counterplay at the moment he goes passive, he goes limp and now we have to realize that both of these three pawns are um, passers but the one way to victory is either this one or this one um, I think it's best to push this one because this one is already protected by the knight and he would have to give up uh, the bishop to stop that idea. So, yeah, I think the h pawn here makes the most sense to promote because it's the quickest way. You know, we could have also gone here, but then we encounter problems when we end up here. So, yeah. So, I think we did some. Well, quite miraculous um, conversion here because we were up against a freaking <laughs> bishop pair, but we managed to squeeze uh, ourselves out of there by some luck because he didn't see um, how to properly, you know, go about this position. But I think. Uh, you know, we played this very cleanly as well. Now everything is just winning. You just have to be very chill. And here we can either, you know, now it really doesn't matter. He doesn't have any material. We can do whatever we want. It really doesn't matter. We could even wait 30 seconds and, um, you know, play on the, what do you call it? The psychological way but I don't see any need to do that I don't think that's really sportmanship even though I'm probably not the most sportmanship guy it's okay goes there all right let's let's see um, the squares right you can still go into a few squares so let's take one away this one and then he has to go to the back rank he does and now that he did we can again look at the squares and we can see that he can still move into this one and this one and that's he also need always needs to so let's go here and I shouldn't take too much time here honestly and now he has to go back suk swam boom boom I'm not gonna pre-move. And like these sort of end games, you know, there's some 
techniques but in the end you don't need to find checks to actually find the quickest mate that's really a weird thing so yeah that's a quite good game i think not sure if we played this uh super super good i think we were for the most part okay he did have some chances from fur in further expression so let's analyze quickly this opening um where he played f3 and the whole point of this is then to get some really nice initiative and if black doesn't know what he's doing he's in trouble like let's say he plays a passive knight f6 a very natural move i think already like something like e5 is coming where do you move the knights let's say you don't feel it and you go back you know you get a lot you can already imagine a lot of bad things happening because you haven't developed any pieces and the engine either goes bad what i do want to explore for a little second is that the engine does point out this move as a third best move not good but after queen takes do you play d5 what is the whole point here i think so d5 very nifty little trap where you have to move the queen and then the bishop is gone so that might be something to remember but by any means white is not forced to take it with the queen and can just play h3 and the only <laughs> response black then has which is good for him is apparently bishop b4 but i think i don't think engine is sure about this but it is a very nice looking move the way to counter this actually is to play d5 sacking a pawn back and after bishop takes knight f6 and there are some nifty tracks tracks traps here where after bishop takes king takes it appears that black is losing a queen but after this check, the queen is attacked and has to drop back. If he doesn't find his move, he is actually the one being doomed because we're a piece up if you count the pieces. So he has to retract the queen and after takes takes, we have a completely sort of equal end game. But um, black can still go wrong here because of this e-pawn uh, being here. So let's say if I play knight d7 if white play, plays f4 you can already imagine these pawns just moving off the board on long term we have problems uh, even rook e8 um, I don't remember the line even rook e8 could be quite nasty I think I don't remember why knight f6 and if takes I thought there were some tech tactics yes there are knight e5 check and after you move back which is very human you can see that this line has been blocked and white can pick up a piece for nothing well for a pawn actually so that's a cool tactic here as well so you know it's a very tricky thing to allow such things even if you do know some theory in this opening so that's why i went for d5 and we just take whatever we can take so if we took this pawn we'd probably just take this one and this pawn is just nasty in his camp so i'm pretty happy with that but he took the other pawn and we just took with the queen knight here bishop there just to allow some get some pressure in and i think yes engine confirms that bishop takes on f3 was the best move and we might have should have taken the queen we did consider it that to say the least but we took the pawn we went back takes takes and here we have a pawn but he has the bishop pair as composition pair knight c3 is best but c6 were fairly good um yeah Apparently, castles is a 
sort of a mistake, which surprises me, but I don't think it's a big, big mistake, so I'm not gonna consider it too much, but I do think h6 is a big one, because we do drop the pawn first and foremost, but I, if that's not even the best move, you know, uh, if this is even the worst move, what is going on? And I should have found bishop c5 here, and after takes, takes, I do think you have this check. That's the reason why I didn't go for it. Knight she's Don't you just Oh but now you take here and after retaking go with the rook here probably and after he goes back we do get some initiative. Hmm. We're actually down a pawn. I don't see the compensation but it's uh it's equal if black plays best. So I'm actually quite happy that we didn't go for this line. Um, because we're still at pawn down and he is the bishop and in practical terms you know this is not going well yeah I'm pr pretty happy that this didn't happen so knight takes knight takes bishop takes rook takes and bishop e7 apparently the only moves but there were also you know <laughs> not other not many other moves because you cannot put the bishop anywhere else and uh, yeah. So yeah, this, this, ro rook g8 best move, but we didn't have much else. And you know, apparently in these sort of positions, you just have to make sense of the moves. And here, I think the critical moments. Oh, bishop d8 best move, but takes takes. I think he should take this pawn. That was the mistake. Uh, that white well mates because now this uh, pawn serves as a sort of umbrella if you don't take it but after it takes apparently the only move that keeps an edge for black is king c7 which is still very logical and after this move we can just start our plan it's still not easy uh, I think there's still a lot of play I still don't know what I'm, what's going on, but yeah, you can see it could go either way here. And after it goes queen b3, yeah, we take up the pawn, and this is just easy backends. And uh, yeah, this is just easy conversion. There's no need to calculate here either, so that was just chilling in position. So that was a pretty nice game, actually. Pretty happy with how it went. Not happy with some moves, but you know. That's chess, we're not scrap masters. Thank you for guys for watching and see you next time when I my, my voice has recovered maybe.